All right. <coughs> Good evening, everybody. So this is uh, Vignesh here. Uh, so today our session would be on SharePoint 2016 overview, as you can see on the deck. So my name is Vignesh Ganeshan. I'm a certified uh, Microsoft SharePoint consultant. I'm the author of the blog site VigneshSharePointThoughts.com, and in addition to that, I also write articles for C# -Sharp Corner and on SharePoint Community. All right. So let's get started. So the agenda for today's session, as you can uh, see on the screen. So today we'll be talking in detail about SharePoint 2016. So to begin with, I'll be talking on the software and hardware requirements uh, to install SharePoint 2016 on premises. Okay. So let's say if you're planning to install SharePoint 2016 for your uh, for yourself or for your customer. So what are the things that you need to be mindful of on the software and hardware space? So I'll be talking in detail about that. So we'll also be talking in detail about what are the new you know, and deprecated features in SharePoint 2016. So what is that Microsoft has removed when it uh, launched SharePoint 2016 and what are that Microsoft has introduced in SharePoint 2016 version. All right. So of course, I'll be talking about some deployment guidelines as well as the best practices to be followed while installing SharePoint 2016. And I'll be giving some insight on the migration approach towards SharePoint 2016. Okay, so let's say if you or your or your customer is looking forward to migrate to SharePoint 2016. Okay, so what is that they need to be mindful of? Okay, uh, I mean, is it okay? Can they do a migration directly from SharePoint 2013 to 2016? If yes, so what are the th uh, what are the things that they need to care about before migrating? Or let's say if they are migrating from SharePoint 2010 to 2016. So is that even feasible? So I'll be talking in detail about stuff like that. And the real meat of today's presentation would be on future packs so as well as on mineral and zero downtime patching all right so this is something which uh, me and i hope everybody would be so interested to uh, learn about so i have some pretty good slides on that and i'll make sure that you gain some good insights for yourself in these topics and at last we'll be doing a recap and i'll conclude i'll also be taking some questions at the end of this session i hope you're all good so i'm moving on with the presentation for now so uh, to begin with, let's talk about the evaluation of SharePoint. Okay, as you can see on the slide, so SharePoint started somewhere in 2001, and it has come all the way till SharePoint Server 2016. Okay, so it has just come a long way. Myself, as a SharePoint consultant, I had the privilege to work on MOS right from MOS 2007 till SharePoint 2016. I believe there would be few folks on the uh, on this session who would be you know who would have worked on 2001 and 2003. But the agent, I mean, the key note here is from all this way, SharePoint has gained a lot of future. SharePoint has indeed come a long way. At least if you see what you used to get on SharePoint 2010 and what you used to see on SharePoint 2016, I think Microsoft has did a phenomenal job in bringing more capabilities and more futures and more enrichment, which can, you know, enhance the way we do business with SharePoint. Okay. So you can just take a good look at this deck for yourself. So. And I also given some uh, context out there, like when content management was introduced, so when cloud and enterprise social features were introduced. Okay. So talking about SharePoint 2016. So when did Microsoft even come up with this idea? So what was that which drove Microsoft to release an on-premises version named as SharePoint 2016? Okay. So the RTM version of SharePoint it was released on March 14, 2016, as you all are aware. So subsequently, on the couple of months, on May 2016, SharePoint 2016 was made available to all the customers. Okay, So that is when Microsoft announced that SharePoint 2016 is out for the public and you get to download it and play around with it. So before I really get into the meat of this presentation, I, all, I, I want to make you all aware that SharePoint 2016 is something which is built by the learnings which Microsoft has gained all these years by you know by running SharePoint online in their data centers. So as I speak on this slide, as I just keep speaking on this presentation, you will see a lot of features which were cherry picked from Office 365 and implemented here. So SharePoint 2016 is nothing but it is a lot of features and capabilities and uh, enhancements which Microsoft was doing on SharePoint online all these years and they just took that idea and they implemented it on SharePoint 2016. Okay. So the focus areas for SharePoint Server 2016. So to highlight, these are the 
three main focus areas on which Microsoft focused for the on-premises version of SharePoint Server 2016. Okay, so to begin with, we have the uh, cloud-inspired infrastructure. So on the infrastructure space, Microsoft has made sure that they have, uh, you know, and built their ideas what they have did on Office 365 for all these years and they made sure that we get to enjoy that on SharePoint Server 2016 as well. Okay, so there has been some improved user experiences in terms of mobile experience and insights and of course Microsoft has done a pretty decent job in the area of compliance and reporting. So we'll just see in detail about this. So in the area of infrastructure, okay, so Microsoft has made sure that any enterprise customer who is using SharePoint 2016 can use SharePoint 2016 in the same way as Microsoft has been using Office 365, the SharePoint Online. Okay, They want us to handle data more efficiently with very less cost. And flexible deployments, yes, with Minroll, you can make sure that you get to do flexible deployments of your environment and maximizing the existing infrastructure. So a few capabilities to spotlight in that space. We have the new streamlined topology in SharePoint 2016. Okay, so in terms of search, you get twice the times wherein you have, you can scale up to 500 million documents and you have the ability to patch your SharePoint farm with zero downtime. I repeat again, you have the ability to patch your SharePoint on-premises farm with zero downtime, which was never ever possible in the history of SharePoint ever. All right, so, so Mineral, so this is something which Microsoft came up with to enhance the way we deploy SharePoint. We are SharePoint administrators or SharePoint architects or developers. This is something which Microsoft introduced to make our lives easy. And of course, support for Windows Server, SQL Server and Windows Azure. So SharePoint is available on Azure as well. You go to the Azure marketplace, you get to choose SharePoint 2016 and you can deploy SharePoint 2016 farm on Azure. Okay. And there has been some good improvement on the um, e-discoveries, the uh, hybrid functionalities like follow document sites and you know and something on the Office 365 integration. I have a couple of more slides coming along where you'll get to see a lot about this. Okay. In terms of user experience, Microsoft has made sure that we can utilize or we can you know uh, and uh, you get to see SharePoint on-premises site because earlier if you see, if you open your SharePoint online Office 365 site in SharePoint in your mobile browser and in the same way if you parallelly open a SharePoint on-premises site on your mobile that used to be, I mean the, uh, the UI was not really pretty user friendly. You don't get to see the same, I mean Office 365 SharePoint online sites were pretty user friendly. I mean everything was just a click away but that was not the case when it came to SharePoint on-premises site. So Microsoft has heard from its customers and it made sure that the mobile experience for a normal end user has been improved in SharePoint 2016. Okay. Document storage and collaboration. Yes, Microsoft has made sure that it has focus, uh, it has given some focus towards this space as well. And of course, Office 365 implementation where you could have, you could go hybrid. So to a uh, few of the capabilities to spotlight in this space, you get f fast page load, okay? You, you can load your uh, uh, SharePoint sites page very faster, which was not possible in the previous versions of SharePoint. And improved link share experiences. Let's say if you want to share a link uh, which is pointing towards a document to your uh, colleagues or to your peers, so Microsoft has made sure that it, it's kind of simpler now. It is not how we used to see it in the previous versions of SharePoint and improved browsing experience on mobile devices and of course for developers there are some new APIs to develop solutions that span SharePoint. And moving on so this is the third focused area which Microsoft has um, you know uh, given their attention to which is none other than compliance. So in the area of compliance Microsoft has made sure that it has introduced a lot of new features and capabilities which was already present on Office 365 and now they made sure that you get to see that on SharePoint 2016 on premises as well. Of course they made sure that the end users who access SharePoint grid ga gain gr good access control. At the same amount of time they want to make sure that the access to which you have on your documents doesn't become intrusive with the compliance standards of your firm. Okay, they want to make sure that you get to enjoy enough access, but at the same point of time, the access you have shouldn't be intrusive to your compliance policies and standards. So a few uh, capabilities to spotlight in this space. Yeah, 
the uh, DLP, which was the uh, I mean the e-discovery, which was once available in Office 365. Now you get that in SharePoint 2016 on premises. You have the um, DLP policy templates. Like let's so, uh, let's say uh, these are predefined policies which can be you know um, built with SharePoint 2016. And let's say a user is violating that policy. Let's say he is uploading a document which is in violation to these policies. Then we'll be getting a notification that hey, there is a user there who's trying to violate this policy. Okay, and of course IRM which is that so even which takes care of your documents from being copied or being shared so these are the main hardware requirements as far as SharePoint 2016 is concerned so let's say the business comes to you and they say that all right we need to go ahead with implementing SharePoint 2016 on premises okay so these are the uh, hardware requirements which you need to be mindful of so the contents which you see on the slide those are just specific to a single server okay so this is you have to just multiple multiply this with the total number of servers which you are planning to use so for single server role that uses SQL server you get to use a 16 GP RAM 16 GP RAM and then 64 bit 4 core processor with 80 GP of system hard drive I'm not going to go through all the contents on this you can just take a good look for yourself and this is also available in TechNet okay for mineral architecture this is what is expected and for folks who already are aware of what Minroll is all about I believe this slide would make sense to you and for folks for I mean who are hearing the term Minroll for the first time I'll be explaining detail about what Minroll is all about and how it works and uh, where did this all come from and why would any you know what is the benefit we gain out of choosing Minroll okay so in terms of software requirements for SharePoint 2016 so in order we just took a look at the hardware requirements so in terms of software requirements the latest generation of Windows and SQL Server is needed okay so let's say if you're planning for uh, SharePoint 2016 then you need to make sure that you're running Windows Server 2012 R2 standard or data center version and similarly it could be either 2012 R2 standard or 2016 standard or data center version the same way for SQL Server Microsoft has made sure that you have to use Microsoft SQL Server 2014 Service Pack 1 or SQL Server 2016 and I mean as, as I already you know in my previous webinar I was talking about where Microsoft is going going with this right if you see about SharePoint 2010 the software and hardware versions for that was totally different similarly if you see on 2013 it was something like uh, SQL 2008 R2 or SQL 2012 and Windows Server 2012 and so when it comes to SharePoint 2016 Microsoft has made sure that you get to use the latest version of SQL and operating system and that is one way of Microsoft to push ourselves to use their new products okay so SQL Server the Express version is no more supported uh, you cannot have a SQL Express version installed and point your SharePoint farm towards that it's just not gonna work you need to make sure that you're using the enterprise version of SQL and you know that's how things have changed in SharePoint 2016 so the prerequisites this is similar to what you used to see on SharePoint 2013 on premises um, the most painful area which I would like to call as because you know when you're uh, installing SharePoint uh, let's say if your farm your server is connected to online it's pretty easy you just need to click on the you know download prerequisites it's gonna download everything and install it for you but if that's not the case and if you have to download all these prerequisite files and then install it manually I hope most of you would be aware of the pain you know the kind of uh, pain you have to go through while doing this because most of them would won't run as expected you get to see a lot of errors I mean indeed it's a good learning to work with this but of course it has its pain points as well so these are the supported browsers as far as SharePoint 2016 is concerned okay let's say your business says uh, our production farm should be on SharePoint 2016 right you also need to make sure that all the uh, client operating systems which end users use have the correct browser version to support SharePoint 2016 let's say your company uses Windows 7 operating system and the default in that is you know Internet Explorer 8 you need to make sure that your your end users are upgraded to Internet Explorer 10 or above only then they get to access a SharePoint 2016 site so just in case if any of you who attended this session are working towards SharePoint 2016 please make sure that you talk to your business and make them aware that you're running the you know the supported browser version 
and of course Microsoft Edge the latest version which you get on Windows 10 for some reason this product is still in development phase there has been a lot of bugs which has been identified and Microsoft is actively working on fixing all those bugs but still it supports SharePoint 2016 and it, SharePoint 2016 just works great there I've tried it for myself and I just can't complain about anything there so some boundaries and limits so as you can see on the slide Microsoft has made sure that they have uh, you know increase the boundary limits on SharePoint 2016 if you can clearly compare the columns between SharePoint 2013 as well as in SharePoint 2016 you could see a tremendous increase in size you know if you see about the content database size in SharePoint 2013 it was just 200 gigabytes but as far as SharePoint 2016 is concerned you know you can have content data uh, database up to 1 TBs up to TBs in size all right so the site collections per content database which was just 2000 to 5000 there and now you get to enjoy up to 1 lakh so increase list threshold which was always a pain point for any average end user I myself as a support back back on my days as my support professional I always used to get you know tickets from end users saying my list is just not working I get this error which says I've reached this threshold limit and when I go and see there it's like they're already you know they already breached the threshold limit and you have to go ahead and play around with indexing the columns or you need to make sure that they're creating a new list and they're moving all their uh, contents from this list to that list I mean there was a lot that you had to do so Microsoft has made sure that it has given some focus in that space as well and increased the threshold limit the max file size has been increased up to 10 GB that is something which is really phenomenal because 10 GB is something which is you know just something which you just can't imagine and in terms of search index items it is twice the times okay so as I speak about this boundaries and limits just make sure that this is possible only when you are running your SharePoint farm with the proper resources right I mean if your farm should be properly scaled out and scaled up only then it's possible for you to stick to these boundaries and limits so any SharePoint farm which is poorly built you just don't get to enjoy you know all these limits which are boundaries or limits which Microsoft suggests so now what's new and what's updated in SharePoint 2016 so for the past few minutes we've been speaking we've been speaking about what are the new you know, what are the hardware and software requirements and what are the focus areas now let's take a look at what is new which Microsoft introduced in SharePoint 2016 so it is just a handful of features which Microsoft has introduced and updated as you can see on the slide I mean uh, it's just not possible for me to go through everything but uh, I mean it is just a handful of things which Microsoft has uh, came up in 2016 okay I'll be of course talking in detail about few noteworthy features which would be really useful for your business as well as for yourself as a SharePoint professional but uh, please take a good look for yourself these are the new and updated features which Microsoft came up with in 2016 okay so what is deprecated what are the things which Microsoft felt which is not required anymore or maybe it heard from its customers and it felt that uh, it is just kind of annoying or we don't really find any value in having those features so Microsoft has shared from its customers in that area and has made sure that it has removed those unwanted features so these are the ones which has been deprecated and removed from SharePoint 2016 okay to begin with we do not get SharePoint foundation version which was possible till 2013 okay so SharePoint foundation version if you take a look at it right so it is which it is a freeware wherein you don't wherein you don't get all the features which you get on the enterprise version but you at least get a minimum amount of it but that is not feasible anymore as far as SharePoint 2016 is concerned you have to purchase the complete enterprise version okay and standalone install mode is no more possible if you think about the standalone install mode right in SharePoint foundation I mean when you're installing it you would see the SharePoint also installing the SQL 2008 Express version okay you'd get the inbuilt SQL which acts as the database that is no more possible if you are planning to install SharePoint 2016 you need to make sure that you're installing the enterprise version of SQL well in advance and then you're gonna point your SharePoint servers towards that you know towards that SQL server so Microsoft has made sure that you get to purchase the enterprise version of SQL as well as SharePoint and then the duet enterprise for Microsoft SharePoint this was something which 
most of the customers didn't use on 2013. This was something which was newly introduced on 2013. It was not present on 2010 version, wherein you could integrate your SharePoint with SAP. And Microsoft felt that I mean, most of its customers were not using it and they kind of deprecated it. And Forefront Identity Manager, it is no more it is no more Forefront Identity Manager to sync your identities from Active Directory to SharePoint. It is MIM now. And Excel service in SharePoint is no more. Okay, so yeah, so whatever uh, Excel documents or whatever you had on SharePoint 2013, if you're planning a migration to 2016, then you have to install Office Online Server. So uh, in terms of the BI capabilities, there has been certain features like Power Pivot, I mean, so, uh, some template kind of stuff which has been removed, which Microsoft felt is not required as they are already available with the Office Online server. And tags, notes, for some re I believe tags and notes was something which was already deprecated in SharePoint Online version itself because as far as I know SharePoint Online was not using tags and notes. And the good hold, I mean the good old, the most powerful stsadm.exe is, it's still there but Microsoft will be deprecating it. And the uh, work management service application I'm not sure how many of uh, you folks have actively used this, but I just really wonder why Microsoft would remove this, you know, this uh, brilliant service application. If you think about the work management service application, right? So what it really does is, if you go to your SharePoint, uh, uh, my site, right, in your on-premises, you would see an option called as my tasks. Okay. So what happens in those my tasks is, let's say, if you're running a project site and whatever the task which has been given to you in your uh, project, let's say your Microsoft project, you get to see all those tasks which has been synced with you will be showing up in your uh, SharePoint uh, my site on that my task uh, section and also whatever tasks you set on your SharePoint task list, the inbuilt SharePoint task list, even that would show up there and whatever task you have in your uh, Outlook. In your Outlook, you have an option to set up your task list, right? You need to make sure that SharePoint is being integrated with Exchange. So using this work management service application, you could sync all your task lists from your project server, as well as from your Outlook, as well as from your SharePoint task list, and it just gives you a generic view under your My Task in SharePoint My Site. For some reason, Microsoft felt that most of its customers are not using it, and it has announced that it will be deprecated. And that is no new version of SharePoint Designer or InfoPath for SharePoint 2016. Like we had on SharePoint 2013, right? In SharePoint 2013, we used to get the Designer version of SharePoint 2013, as well as InfoPath 2013. So Microsoft hasn't come up with any new such uh, version for SharePoint 2016. You, you can use the InfoPath version 2013 as well as SharePoint Designer 2013 to customize your uh, SharePoint 2016 site. So hybrid futures. So what are the futures which are which can go hybrid? So before I really go ahead and talk about hybrid futures, I just really, you know, want to uh, comment a lot on that quote which I put there. This was something which, uh, you know, uh, Bill Baird, the senior, uh, you know, marketing manager of uh, SharePoint and Microsoft. This was something which he was talking in one of his presentations, and this really caught my attention. So what he says is. Hybrid is just not meant to bring your business to the cloud, right? But to bring cloud to your business. You know, if you think about hybrid, a couple of years back, any enterprise or any company would use hybrid to make sure that they are moving their on-premises workload to the cloud. Okay, that's what the uh, view on hybrid used to be for the past couple of years. But now, if you think about hybrid, the entire view has changed. Right. So you would go hybrid just to make sure that you acquire cloud for your business. So that was that made a lot of sense to me and i just wanted to make sure and i wanted to you know have this in this presentation so these are the hybrid futures in sharepoint 2016 these are the futures which could go hybrid so you could have hybrid sites you could have hybrid follow as far as hybrid follow is concerned you have this follow functionality in your sharepoint my site right so you could follow a site in your sharepoint 2013 on premises site and you can follow your site in your sharepoint online tenant and you'd get a generic view of all the sites which you follow under a single my site okay this was something when you when you when you're running hybrid your your end users can see all the sites which they are following on sharepoint online as well as in sharepoint on premises in a single page so office 365 profiles you have this delve and in terms of hybrid OneDrive for business, right? With hybrid OneDrive for business, what you gain is, let's say a user in his SharePoint on-premises site is trying to access his OneDrive for business folder, okay? So you can 
make it hybrid in such a way that every moment a end user clicks on his OneDrive for Business, it redirects him to the OneDrive for Business folder in the cloud in Office 365. Because what you get in cloud is one terabyte of OneDrive for Business space. Um, it's not it's not even possible to give one terabyte of space on your data center per user. Okay, so that is something which Microsoft has brilliantly came up with. It's made sure that you could go hybrid with OneDrive for Business, and of course you have the cloud hybrid search. So with using cloud hybrid search, so an end user can make sure that he gets to search for a document on SharePoint on premises, as well as he gets to, he gets the results for let's say he's searching for something called as. Uh, 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 some HR policies or something. Let's say whatever is kept on on-premises or whatever is kept on online will be showing up in the search results. As I speak about hybrid, you need to make sure that your users do have access to the SharePoint online content as well as the SharePoint on-premises content and they are licensed. Okay, they need to have enough licenses on SharePoint Online as well. Okay, they should be having the SharePoint Online license or E3 or E5 or whatever your business is using. Only then they get to enjoy the complete hybrid benefits. Okay, so the next one is where are we now? Okay, so I just spoke about SharePoint 2016 where it came up. So where did we really land up now? Where are we currently with SharePoint 2016? Okay. So as you can see on this uh, uh, pictorial representation here, so Sh SharePoint started somewhere in uh, March 2016. That is when it was the RTM and later it was made available to the public May 2016 as I just spoke about. So as Microsoft started uh, developing SharePoint 2016, right, they really had this thing in their mind. So what happens when Microsoft is developing any product, let's just not for SharePoint, right, let's think about Exchange or SQL or let's speak about Skype for Business. So what happens is, uh, if you you know what happens is, if you think about if, if you think about SharePoint Online, right, you would get to see a lot of features, new features and new functionalities coming up just every now and then. You will just see a news that Microsoft is introducing this new feature in SharePoint Online, and boom, next week you will be seeing it sitting there. But as far as SharePoint on premises was concerned, for the same feature to show up in on premises, it took a lot amount of time. So what Microsoft would be doing is they'll be developing a product which would be taking uh, let's say, let's talk about SharePoint, which might take two to three years where they have to code SharePoint 2016, and on top of that they spend another one or one and a half years in testing all the uh, functionalities which they have developed in SharePoint, and then they keep testing it with all the you know with all the bug fixes and all those kind of stuff. So what happened at some point of time is for a future to show up in SharePoint Online, the same future to show up in SharePoint on premises there was such a big lag wherein it used to take at least four years. If you're seeing a future today on SharePoint Online, for the same future to show up on SharePoint on-premises, it would at least take three to four years. And Microsoft thought that they had to do something about that because they didn't want to keep doing that anymore. Okay, so what they thought about is they, needed, they had to come up with something called as public updates as well as converge code base. Okay, if you think about the updates or any fixes which come to you, right, the fixes come to you in vehicles such as cumulative updates or maybe hot fixes. But most of these cumulative updates and hot fixes are they're just bug fixes. Let's say any bug which is represented to, which is you know which from end users is given to Microsoft, right? They'll be releasing the fix for that bug in a CU or in a hot fix or a collective of all these CUs will be coming up as service packs. So Microsoft wanted to change the entire uh, thing. They want to make sure that you, we as end users who are using SharePoint 2016 on-premises always stay up to date. I'll just toggle the next slide and come back here so that it will make a lot of sense to you. So before I go back to that slide, let me talk about what converged code base means. This is something which Microsoft newly introduced in 2016 and this is how SharePoint 2016 is built. So what Microsoft was doing is in SharePoint Online, as far as SharePoint Online is concerned, right? The tenant is live there, you just keep seeing the site working perfectly fine and parallelly on the back end they'll be working on pushing new features, new bugs and all those things and you just wouldn't even notice when they even done that, right? The next year you come to office you see all of a new feature showing up that it's just sitting there and you didn't even realize when did Microsoft even do this? I mean with, with no downtime they were, just, they were just capable enough of doing that. So Microsoft thought that they took that idea within themselves and they implemented the same. When, you, when we say converge, it is like in parallel. So the code which Microsoft used for SharePoint Online, the source code which Microsoft was using for SharePoint Online was implemented on SharePoint 2016 on premises. Okay. Now, now the benefit about using the same source code is that, let's say if a future has been pushed in SharePoint Online, right? 
that feature has already been tested by millions and thousands of users because they are just keep using that every day any user who's using SharePoint online he'll be using the same alright so there is no need for you to even test it the same feature if you push it to SharePoint server on premises right the same source code obviously you're going to remain up to date and that is what Microsoft thought that they didn't want that lag they didn't want that release cadence to come up they didn't want to see a future showing up in SharePoint online three to four years and there is a delay you know between the on-premises version as well as the online version so Microsoft thought that we had to do something about it so the idea which they came up with to use the source code for SharePoint online and SharePoint and push that to SharePoint on-premises 2016 that is one reason which you see a uh, most of those features which you used to see on SharePoint online showing up in SharePoint 2016 on-premises now I'm going back to my previous slide where I was showing you about where we are now all right so now the big news about SharePoint 2016 is SharePoint 2016 you do not have service packs anymore in SharePoint 2016 okay so if any of you who attended this session are uh, waiting or thinking about service pack one should come up sometime in next year so please don't wait anymore because there is not going to be service packs in SharePoint 2016 okay and SharePoint 2016 we have future packs there is no more uh, service packs so let me just take you through this so here instead of you get these public updates which is none other than cumulative updates where Microsoft keeps pushing some of its futures as well as its bug fixes okay so let's say on May they pushed a public uh, on the, they pushed a PU and let's say on the subsequent June or July they keep pushing the other PU so you'll be seeing bug fixes as well as new features coming up with all these public updates okay you just wouldn't even realize when all these things are being pushed and all of a sudden with future pack one future pack one is nothing but the November PU for SharePoint 2016 okay the name which Microsoft gave for uh, November PU is called as future pack one it is something similar to a service pack where all of a sudden let's say on PU July so there was some future which Microsoft introduced which was on building phase okay on let's say on August there was some of PUs which they fixed which some futures were on the building phase uh, where, where they were just testing about it all of a sudden you'll you'll be getting the complete version of that future on the November PU so what happens is let's say if you're a user here who installed 2016 and then you install the public update here and then you install this for some point of time you won't even be realizing the new future showing up but Microsoft is indeed pushing it on the backend all of a sudden when you come up with the November PU right you'll be seeing all these new futures so the uh, point which you need to catch here is it doesn't mean that all of a sudden you go ahead and download the PU for November and you, you just shouldn't think that okay I downloaded I get to see all the features from here no that's not the way it works things are getting pushed from here you need to make sure that you keep on updating everything and that is when you get to enjoy the complete functionalities of future pack one okay so that is how it has been designed and uh, as I spoke about you know so in future pack one you would be seeing many futures I'll be talking in detail about that on my very next slide so Microsoft has also discussed they also announced that they'll be introducing a new future pack on 2017 that they already started working on it Th this entire idea of future pack was announced by Microsoft sometime on uh, if I'm not wrong sometime on uh, May on a, on a conference at San Francisco I believe so that is when they announced that we'll be coming up with a new future pack and this is how we would like to work on SharePoint 2016 moving further okay so but they were at least six months ahead of their schedule because the future pack one release was planned on 2017 but they managed to give it well ahead in schedule on November 2016 okay so as I speak as I keep moving on the slide the content the, the topic of future pack would make more sense to you since we already spoke about this I'm moving on so once again I reiterate the source code of SharePoint online was used on SharePoint server as far as 2016 is concerned this is something new which Microsoft wanted to do and the results were really phenomenal so future packs as I just spoke about to avoid the uh, release cadence the two to three year release cadence Microsoft has heard from its customers they need to make sure because the, their customers were not really as far as the on-premises customers were concerned right because the online customers they get to enjoy every new futures every now and then but that was not the case as far as on-premises customers were con uh, as, as far as on-premises customers were concerned right so they heard from the customers and they made sure that the same features which you see on SharePoint online you also get to enjoy that on SharePoint 2016 as well so what's new on this future packs as I already said the 2016 public update for SharePoint Server 2016 is called as future pack one so what is new what are the new features and functionalities which showed up on the future pack one 
you have some mineral enhancements you have SharePoint custom tiles you have SharePoint hybrid taxonomy administrative actions logging OneDrive API for developers SharePoint hybrid as well as OneDrive for business modern experience I'll just talk in detail about all this one by one okay so first let's begin this is how to categorize stuff so a normal information worker in terms of him the future pack has the OneDrive for business user experience as well as custom app launcher and for developers we have the new OneDrive API as far as uh, the IT side is concerned we have the uh, mineral enhancements the hybrid auditing hybrid taxonomy as well as administrative action logging okay uh, is everybody able to hear me I've been hearing concerns that the audio is not fees we lost the audio Can everybody hear me? Hello? Yeah, my mic is fine. Can you all hear me? Hello? Uh, guys, am I? Uh, am I audible now? Hello? Uh, Alright, okay, uh, guys, I just, I'm not sure where I lost the audio. Can you let me know which, an ex which exact topic? I don't want to make sure, I just want to make sure that you didn't lose anything. Where exactly was the audio lost? I mean, if you could put that on the chat, it would be great. Like, where exactly the audio was lost? Lost. Yeah. So, and, and you can see my screen as well, right? One moment. One moment. Okay, okay, got you. Uh, Manish, uh, am I still a presenter? Like I... Okay, okay, but presenter right is still with me, right? Okay, fine, fine, thank you. I'm sorry about that guys so I hope you all can see my screen now right can everybody see my screen guys just confirm that 